Hey everyone, it's Maria here from the Maria Similov Project and today we are talking to Rod Brownjohn who is one of our graduates from the INFX Unveiled program. So INFX Unveiled of course is one of our INFX projects for the INFJs and INFPs of the Myers-Briggs personality indicator model. And Firstly, welcome, Raj. Thank you very much for taking the time to be here. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, it's it's great to have you. Hi, Maria. It's great to be here. Hey, hey, Raj. So, so what I'd like to do today, if that's okay, is I'd like to have you tell us a little bit about yourself, as well as, you know, your life experience as an INFP. And also your experiences on the INFX Unveiled program. Would that work for you? Absolutely. No problem at all. Lovely. Thanks so much. So let's start with the first one. If you don't mind just telling us a little bit about who you are, Rod. Who, who are you as a, yourself? Who are you as an INFP? And how do you, how do you come to this world? What, how do you show up for us? Okay. Well, um, I'm INFP, like you said, and I'm one of the INFP types that I think my main um, theme around my personality is creativity and also uh, connectivity, connecting with other people. And one of the one of the main things that I like to do is music. So I'm a, I'm a songwriter and I've been playing uh, guitar for 25 years wow. and and yeah, it's been, it's been one of my um, things that, that's been a real passion of mine. Um, been in lots of different musical projects, lots of different bands. And, um, you know, it's something that's really kind of been central to who I am. And the other thing is, is um, just relational um, things with people, getting into... Um, healing modalities i worked as a uh, mental health professional for 10 years um okay. worked with uh, people with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder and you know some real kind of um challenging environments as well when it comes wow. to that kind of uh, style of healing work um so that that's that they're my two themes you know it, it's really about relating to other people and um having a level of intimacy uh in in conversation and connecting with people and and the wounded as well you know that people sure. people that have had struggles in their lives yeah so you know there's a bit of an em- empathic trait to that and then i come home and um i make music so <laughs> wow. they've been the two two themes uh as as an infp you know the the kind of high level of empathy and creativity yeah yeah and do you do you mind telling us a little bit about your own experiences in how you grew up and why were you why were you maybe even attracted to to this kind of work that you're doing with both the music as well as the mental mental uh, health care side of things well, my story is, um, you know, I grew up in a family that um, I never really felt I fitted into. Mm. Um, I suspect that, um, you know, it's got a lot of resonance for other INF types that um, there's a a kind of um, a feeling um, around your intimate family and um, that, that you're somehow different. And somehow you can translate that into there's something wrong with me. You know, yeah. there's something wrong with who I am. There's something wrong with, um, there must be something wrong with me because people aren't communicating with me the way I communicate with people. So that was a big theme um, in my household. And also um, my parents had their own struggles. Um, my father had really quite a bad temper mm. and was uh, physically uh, abusive um in the household and um you know he has his own reasons and his own story for yeah. that but you know that his behavior is his responsibility um 
and my mother um she had quite a difficult upbringing as well and i think like you know when you trace the story back and you have your own children um those wounds can kind of be passed down and you know that that's kind of what happened with me so i grew up in a in quite an oppressive atmosphere right. um due to the behavior of of my father and you know i don't know if listeners know your story but you know when i when i first listened to how you came to this healing work it had a lot of resonance with me because of your background with with your family mm. and that was one of the things which I, I really struck a chord with me um when, when you gave that first video um i thought you know this is someone that kind of really could understand or or has understood through her own experience um what i've gone through yeah. um so that was that was that was my early life, you know, it was kind of an oppressive household, you know, I was very restricted. Um, and I suspect if you look at it in Myers-Briggs terms, that they're both thinker sensor types, my parents as well. Right. So, um, you know, there was this kind of, you know, I just felt like an alien and um, it was difficult. And yeah, unfortunately, in my 20s, I went down um a path of um addiction um mm. which uh, you know I, i'm now sort of not you know i don't do drugs and alcohol anymore i'm sober yeah. um but but that was just sort of like a unfortunate but natural uh progression um yeah. because of my early stuff you know and you know i got into therapy over the years um uh in the early 2000s and um straighten myself out that way and then yeah I got into the mental health stuff yeah yeah I can imagine that if you felt so restricted and oppressed as a child that you had to find a freedom and um, oftentimes yeah. freedom can come in form of substance or you know food or exercise whatever whatever is the is the addiction that is the, the that you're more most prone to or that you're used to getting the fix from because without freedom especially for infps without freedom your life is not an authentic life and it's so wonderful to see that you have created that sense of freedom in your own life later on you know working especially working with schizophrenia any one of those specific types of mental health challenges. Um, there's a lot of yeah. freedom in expressing yourself in, you know, for those people who are, who are having those challenges in expressing themselves um, freely. And, and, you know, so that's a, that's a, an interesting reflection that you went to work in an area where you are basically working with people who feel out of control and yeah. you know and completely free as such because they cannot be contained and i don't mean that yeah. i i want to say i'm i'm if any of this comes across like i'm i'm you know being derogatory or in any way uh, negative about mental health issues or any of that it, that's not the intent at all it's it's i've i've had experience with schizophrenic people and i just uh, the, the honesty of the expression that is completely so free when the the the, the thing is on when it's on um, is just something mm -hmm. that you rarely see in life. And from from that perspective, it's you can't you can't do anything. I don't think except for really appreciate that that person has that reality for a very good reason. Absolutely, and and it's about meeting them on on the level that they're operating on. Exactly. And I think a common thing. Yeah, um, a common theme was, um, I think there's always a sense of um, abandonment with with people with those kind of diagnoses, um, yes. abandoned within themselves. And, um, and I think because of my early wounds, I could really kind of empathise with that in them, but perhaps in a different way. But there was certainly a theme of, you know, empathetic exchange going on because yes. I kind of felt, I felt familiar with that kind of emotional wound, not yes. the behavior, but the emotional wound, you know, so, you know, it's, it's, um, it, it was challenging, but rewarding at the same time. 
I can imagine. And also then through your music as well, that's a completely free space for you. I've heard some of your pieces and what I might actually do is is put a recording of yours to the end of this interview so that our listeners can also enjoy your, your music. If, be great. Yeah, yeah, if that's okay for you. But uh, um, also the freedom is in, it's very clearly in your music. It's just so beautiful. It's just so beautiful. And I haven't heard you live, perhaps someday when I'm in Europe, one day, maybe next year when I'm in Europe, okay. um, would be awesome. But uh, we'll see how everything plays out. But yeah, it's, there's sure. obviously so much freedom. You are expressing that freedom now in your life that you couldn't back then. Yeah, and even in the darker years through addiction as well, um, it was always a creative outlet for whatever was going on with me. And yeah. I, I think that the, the sort of wounds had come out in some of my darker pieces of music. Um, sure. But they're, they're kind of um, not where I am now, shall we say. But, sure. but it's always been a bit of a lifeline to have that outpouring, um, you know, um, into music. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that is the thing about emotions, whether it's, um, you know, particularly dark or we all go through times in our lives when we can relate to any piece of music pretty much you know, in a in a face of yeah. a big loss or in a face of whatever other big challenges that we have. It's it's wonderful to yeah. have to to have, you know, a scope in, in, in a certain way to express everything that needs to be expressed. And there's no better no, no better person than a nine of P to do that. <laughs> it's so yeah. wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's one of our natural worlds that we reside in yeah definitely and I think also you know with music um you know we don't live in a one season world you know it's not always sunshine in in our hearts and you know if you want real uh, release of emotions or some kind of cathartic experience then there's all kinds of music that will accommodate it and and it's really quite a powerful tool to put on a record and and use that certain mood to enhance or you know just get rid of the mood um so so that that's how i see it anyway brilliant and uh can i just ask you with your background um it sounds like you've done a lot of work for you know on yourself and with yourself and you had a lot of awareness about yourself already but what then attracted you to the INFX Unveiled course? What what happened? Like, what well, what was the thing for you? Well, it, it was it's a real simple one. It was it's the fact that it was designed by you being an INF type. Okay. You know, I got tired. I got tired of looking at online programs that you know you sort of see um the landing page and you you scroll down and it's like you know achieve your dreams and this that and the other and whenever i um had downloaded one you know over the last maybe three to five years i've I've downloaded you know two or three and tried to stick with them but the thing i never liked about it was the the sort of this cultural trend that we have of extroverted delivery you know like the way the information is delivered the style in which it's presented the speed and the pace of even the person's voice um i kind of i'm like this just isn't sitting with me what is it about these programs you know that that i'm just not fitting in with Hmm. and you know i've I've been into myers-briggs for a few years and you were the first person that i saw online as an INF type that was delivering a course around right. healing and moving forward, yeah. you know, and I, I think that's quite hard to come by. So well done. <laughs> you know, if you, if you look at the, the majority, the vast, vast majorities of programs out there, you know, you get this sense that it's this, sort of the, the dominant kinds of um, themes. Are, it's, it's very thinking type you know it's run by thinking or sensing yes type actions yes. activities and people um so i saw your initial videos and um you know i think that was back in maybe july or august on personality hacker yeah um listen to your story um you know and and your background and your childhood and 
just to some of the other content that you had on the videos was really good. Um, just the promotional stuff. And, you know, there was a video on um, healing INFX wounds, INFJ, INFP wounds that I saw. Um, there was a video on resistance to healing work, you know, and mm. some examples of healing work. And that, so I just looked at the videos and you know, spent, I don't know how long, an hour or two on those. And I just thought, wow, you know, this person, it just felt right. It felt like we, we had a kinship and that it was something that um, I could actually work with at the pace that I wanted to go, you know. Yeah. So yeah. That, that, that's, that's what it it was. It was like the, it was the first time I'd met an INF type that had stepped up you know and 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 sort of gone right i'm going to do do a program and um what i liked about it as well before just the promotional material was the focus was on not just moving forward but but the healing work involved you yeah know? yeah and a lot of them and healing and i think that's the theme with us that you know there's a lot of healing to be done it's not about right you know make a list of activities and time and yeah. it's like you know let's just go back let's rewind take it easy take it a bit slower and it, it just you know when I when I actually um started the course it, it's just got a quite a nurturing feel to it and brings out the you know your own inner nurturing so yeah absolutely and that's exactly what it's designed to do is to allow you to choose how you are with yourself and that was, for me, when I wrote that course, it was for the specific purpose of making sure that people have access to where I had to go in order to be in a position where I can run this co- type of course. It's like, great, you know, great. you can't show up and you can't step up unless you've done this work as an INF type because the world is very unforgiving in many ways. You have to be able to stand strong and say, I'm here. We're doing this. Absolutely. And, you know, and we're doing it the way that is right for us. We are not doing this in a way that we should do this. We are doing this because this is how it works for us. And we're making the most of our lives because our lives are as important as anybody else's lives. So, yeah. Absolutely. And, and, that, and that's, what's, that's what's come across, you know, with the program is, uh, you know, you're, you're someone that, you know, can have that kind of stature with, with this topic. And, and, you know, you, you come across as someone that um, has done the work and is able to deliver it. So, you know, that was one of the things that I thought, you know, I can, I can trust, <laughs> I can trust this program and I can trust this person. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for those reflections. That's, that's great to hear. It's, it's always great to hear uh, when people have had an authentic, like a, like a kinship with the work and with what I have available. It's, it's wonderful to, and, you know, reassuring in a way that, yes, I've seen it work a hundred times, 200 times, 300 times, a thousand times, but every time you actually hear that it has worked, it's like it's the first time, if that makes sense. It's as important sure. as any other, as any other time. So yeah, I appreciate that. So okay. how did you feel when you started the course? Did you have any like concerns or confusions about what was going to happen or were you like looking forward to the experience? What were your, what was your like initial, were you nervous? Were you excited? <laughs> Where were you at? Well, my, my first, um, I, I know what I'm like with, with doing new things and it is a kind of INFP thing. You know, the theme for me is around um, reading the materials, yeah. you know, and taking notes, lots and lots of notes, notebooks full of notes um, but not actually doing the exercises. So <laughs> with, with any course, I, you know, I kind of said to myself, look, this is a great course. Don't do what you usually do and procrastinate. And, yeah. you know, uh, there's a thing with me, you know, I, I kind of, I, I get the information and I'm like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I think I've heard that before. Yeah, that, that's great. And then yeah. I do nothing with it. So yeah. the promise I made to myself, was like you know 
this time let's just do the do the exercises that are involved and and what's great about it i mean the the four sessions is that the exercises are quite simple but yeah. if you do them they end up having a lot of depth yes so for for example that you know in the in the first um session when we talk about the chameleon mode um you know the the exercises around that were quite simple mm. Um, but putting it into practice consistently, you know, that was, that was my challenge, you know, initially when I started, it was a, you know, that first sort of exercise around being more authentic, um, mm-hmm. publicly and with people that you trust. Yeah. And, you know, for the first few times, I have a great friend, Susie, we go once a week uh, over the park, take her dogs out, which is a That's lovely cool. introverted thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> and you know she was my my person that i um would try out this first exercise on so that weeks one or two were a bit um you know i'd write down that i'd I'd mentioned this certain thing that was personal to me and and, um stay with and stay with the feelings of it and um so it was the, the 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 um the beginning stages the first i suppose month um was you know i i had that that kind of nervous feeling when i was actually out there doing the exercises yeah, like yeah. you know this is real stuff i'm and just talking I'm about doing it. It for real. <laughs> yeah and, and then coming back home and you know making notes about um how it went and yeah. i also have a psychotherapist um that i see once a week as well which i yeah. have a, a developing bond with Um, so they were my two people there so yeah I mean it it was about procrastination and not doing the exercises but but I got in there yeah and other than that I was excited and yeah I was looking forward to it because it was like you know you were speaking my language and I'd found someone that was speaking in a way that um resonated with me yeah and um yeah and just you know the the content in in the um when I first started, it was like, wow, this is like my life being reflected back to me, <laughs> which is, I didn't, I didn't have with the other programs. It's like, you know, sure. this is so similar to me. And when we, you get onto the Q and a at the end of the sessions, um, the, you know, it's like, however, four or five people just with <laughs> these questions or these um, <laughs> statements and are like, Oh, I, I could have said that three years ago, you know, or I could have said that yesterday. It's like, it's a group of people that are speaking my language. So yeah. you know, when I, I, when I started the course, it was, you know, it was scary, but exciting at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. And what were you hoping to achieve from the course? Did you have any specific achievements um, or um, where were I, you? I think, I think what I, I didn't want to make myself any really super heavy promises. Yeah. Um, so at, at the, the beginning, it's like, you know, I, I'm not looking for enlightenment. I'm not looking for <laughs> a dream, a dream career. Um, I'm looking for self understanding mm. uh, within, within the, you know, not confines, but the construct of, of Myers Briggs and being an INF type. Yeah. Um, and, you know, getting used to what my cognitive patterns were yes. and my sort of emotional patterns. And certainly around when we're talking about the sort of inner wounding and the childhood wounds. And it's it was, I was hoping to achieve as much awareness as I could around how my wounds were functioning when I'm out there in the world and, and, and the program helped me do that, you know? So it really about, um, slowly changing those lifelong habits that, that I think with me, with my particular background, um, with my childhood and this sense of oppression and not actually being allowed to go out and explore, not being allowed to um be creative you know all those things were were the things that i was hoping to just get more insight into and it's like well you know what is actually going on what what's the unconscious 
messages that I've received there on what, what's really going on and what's what's stopping me. Yeah. And I, I think other things, um, I wanted a more, we talk about, you know, sense of identity and mm. um, a sense of being more secure in yourself um, when it comes to your purpose and you know who you are out there in the world that that was one thing it was it's it's all right sitting in my room talking about it but it's yeah. actually being able to go on adventures that that's what I wanted to achieve is just just go out there do it make a decision don't think about the decision don't decide to make a decision about the decision <laughs> just go out there <laughs> make a decision and, and go and, yeah go do something go so do and I've started to do that so you know I've I've set out trying to like let's just go and explore these ideas that I have about who I am in the world yeah and I and that's really consistent so over the last four or five months five months ago when I first downloaded the program um that's something that I've stuck to every weekend is actually going out and exploring. So I was hoping to achieve consistency with just that level of confidence and going out there. And, and with that comes a, just a higher level of uh, self-esteem as well. You know, Absolutely. when you, yeah, you're out there and you're exploring ideas and going to different meetups and going to different events and using information and the experience to aid your decision making mm. about what what direction your purpose is going in. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm really proud of that one. I'm really proud of that. You know, that's something I achieved is because I I've I've spent a lot of time over the last however many years just sitting at home thinking yeah. or daydreaming yeah or sitting in um you know a a kind of puddle of emotions or you know they're like an old armchair that's comfortable and you can't quite yeah. get out of yeah that's very well so, actually so that, that's, that's a really good way of saying it it is like an old comfortable armchair you know the one that mm. you kind of sit deeply in that you kind of almost surround yourself with that armchair and you just sit there and you don't have to deal with anything in the outside world. That's very, absolutely very good way of saying it. Yeah. yeah. And, did you, and, and so, you know, did you achieve that you're, you're now doing consistently, you're going out every weekend, as you were saying to, to do something. Yeah. Uh, do you feel like you were successful in, in, in your exercise? Yeah. It's what, each time I go out, each um, activity that I join in with is like a piece of a puzzle, right. you know, so that there's a certain theme around um, my, what I'd call my purpose and like how it feels, mm. but I can't, I can't actually see the whole picture clearly unless I'm out there exploring and if you want to look at it in Myers-Briggs terms it's the you know extroverted intuition yeah you know the exploratory thing and it's going out there and I'm I'm gathering these pieces of this puzzle um and trying different things on and some have fitted and some haven't and uh, on a piece of paper I I'm just assembling those ideas and um, trying to meld them together. Mm. Um, so so it's it's working. It's a slow process because um, it requires a lot of consistency. Uh, but I I've, I'm closer to it in that you know the kind of things that I've been doing. I mean I've been going to creative uh, circles so I've been um, going to a drumming group mm -hmm. where it's um, a drum um, circle yeah. in a therapeutic sense you know nice. so that's about um, just releasing whatever's going on with you through a very primitive and tribal way of doing it drumming um, and and that's something that I I'm thinking about running my own drum circle now that sounds but great. adding 
Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm adding in some of the things that I've learned in my um, occupational health career with with uh, mental health. So it's it's just you know you you have a new experience, you have a new idea, and pull up some of what you've got historically that you can add to that. So that that's where I'm going with this. Yeah, and I'm also into uh, alternative healing as well. So um, around energy healing and Reiki, which I'm doing my training for at the moment. Right. And, and just going out to those workshops and, um, you know, pulling in those ideas as part of my identity and, as, and part of a career path. So, so it's yeah. coming together. Nice. Very nice. And uh, what did you feel were like the biggest challenges um, throughout the course when you, were, when you were doing the exercises, when you were like out there actually implementing what you'd learned? What were the biggest challenges for you? um it's all about triggers you know it's it's about being triggered was the challenges um i i participated in a a workshop a four-week workshop um where i was playing cuban music um i've never played cuban music before Mm. and it was one of one of my explorations i've been playing guitar a very long time but not cuban and um you know i had to read charts and i had to do um lots of different kind of rhythms and um meet new people and for me to put myself in that situation when i'm where i'm performing as well um and and being with other musicians that i've not met before and some are of a better caliber and some the the tutors are professional and yeah. you know how am I coming across so lots of triggers when I'm in there and I'm out there and I'm doing whatever it is that's new yeah my inner child would would come up and go we don't want to do this do we really yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> especially your 10 year old which is the memory which is all about you know how things should be done and if there's anything that's too yeah. and too like uncomfortable he's not comfortable in it because he hasn't done it before <laughs> yeah yeah so um, with the in the with the in the parenting work you know before those sessions i'd have a chat on the tube you know I'd be taking the underground in london yeah. and um I'd have a conversation with my inner child about, you know, whatever happens, um, it's going to be okay. And no matter how you feel, it's okay to feel it. As long as you don't stay in it, you know, for days on end. So um, that was my my major challenge was just like, I'm being triggered. I'm, you know, there's people that, you know, a low, a chunk of low self-esteem would come up and I'd think yeah. that, you know, I'm not good enough for this situation. These people, I don't fit in with these people. Yeah. Um, they don't like me. And it, there was no evidence of that. Yes. But, yeah. you know, it's just that, that historic stuff. And there's, you know, a very rational part of me that's standing aside and watching the whole thing happen, thinking, oh, that's really interesting, yeah. which was great to be able to do because, you know, if, I wasn't a hundred percent in the wound at that moment. I'm just yes. sort of coming out, of it. but, but triggered all the time, you know, um, around fitting in and around self-worth. And yeah. what I did with that was just when I got home was just to make a diary entry about what actually happened. Right. You know, not right. what I, what, what actually happened in real time yeah. in real life isn't that the not big challenge I... though sorry isn't that the big yeah. challenge though for an infp is to not go into the story because the story the, you know the inner story is so strong and it's so believable to for for you yeah. to actually challenge that and some of the most amazing infps that i've met the most successful ones in their own terms successful i i don't i'm not a, a judge to say who's successful and who's not but the infps who have deemed themselves successful that is that what you described there is exactly what they've been doing they have chosen to not buy into the that childhood story Instead, they're actually looking at what did actually happen and then live their life from that. Because when you live your life from the story, you keep getting the same story. 
But when you live your life from what actually happened, then your life can change and evolve. And it's just so, you've said it so well. It's just so wonderful to hear that. Thank you for that reflection. That's, that's wonderful. That's, that's fine. And the other challenge was just, again, it's just giving myself permission as well to follow what resonates with me and what, not what other people, you know, what, what I think other people might want me to follow. Yes. Um, it's actually giving myself permission to go, you know, I want to be a complete hippie today and meet up with <laughs> some of my alternative friends and have a fire in the woods and, and play music. Yeah. And um, there's always this chitter chatter of old parental messages going, yeah. you know, that's absurd. You know, that's, that's not going to get you a job and all this historic nonsense. And um, it's the, the more you do it, the more you kind of just say, I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. Um, the, strong, the, the stronger the reality of that becomes, yeah. the stronger of, of, you know, the stronger the um, experience as it is becomes rather than the historic nonsense, you know. Mm. So, so they're, they're the two challenges for me. Yeah. Giving myself permission to go for it and just when I had given myself permission, dealing with the triggers. Yes. Yeah, exactly right. And and it's so lovely to hear that you're so aware that you're you know, you are taking this effectively a risk, right? You're taking this Absolutely. risk of putting yourself out there, knowing you're gonna get triggered, but knowing that you'll also be okay if you will be triggered, that you'll be there for yourself. And then you know, allowing yourself to have the space to feel the feelings, knowing that the feelings are not going to last forever, that you're not going to unpack there and stay there, yeah. but instead just kind of letting yeah. it. So it becomes a lot more flexible and a lot more kind of uh, fluent rather than rigid boxes. Now I'm, you know, now I'm triggered and mm. everything's shit. Sorry. <laughs> I listen, yeah. If you're easily yeah. offended by cursing, I'm sure you're not. If you're no, no, I think <laughs> it's, it's not. <laughs> curse away yeah go on I said curse away if you need to it's fine <laughs> I have to say I've toned it way way back so okay. moving swiftly along <laughs> um, if you step back from doing the work if you step back from the f- last five months you've basically done the work for the last kind of five five-ish months and if you just yeah. step back from it and you look at your life right now and then you look at a snapshot of your life back when you started, what are the differences between the two pictures? Uh, the, first and foremost is the relationship with, that I have with myself. Yeah. You know, uh, before, before the course was um, me making partial efforts to do this stuff, you know, be out there being me. Yeah. Um, be kind to myself I had a lot of negative voices about self-worth and who I felt I was and what I was worthy of um prior to the course and it's it's turned into like my internal headspace and those kind of thoughts um and that dialogue that I have with myself is completely different you know that's the main thing the the relationship I have via the way I talk to myself and the way I actually listen to myself now I listen to myself and and I have feelings come up in my body or I have a tiredness or I have a need or I have something a a trigger that's gone off Mm. and I'm able to just nip it in the bud and identify. I mean, there's a really helpful on one of the sessions, um, one of the exercises um, that you put out there was the, um, what do you need right now? You know? Yeah. yeah. What, what do you need right now? And give it to yourself. Yeah. How are you feeling right now? And what do you need right now? Yeah. And, yeah. and that's the kind of core essence of what I've been doing and just really quickly identifying that and being able to bring myself back into a space where 
I feel I'm not rattled, you know, I'm not yes. for days on end before the course. I, I just go into a very negative spiral around, you know, my value as a person and yeah. my worth in the world. And the inner parenting has changed that. So I don't have a negative voice, you know, I don't have a ne- negative inner parent voice anymore. Yeah. Wow. And I de- certainly had one. I certainly had one for 41 years, you know. That's <laughs> massive. It's massive because that inner parenting voice often comes from the voices of our own actual parents. So what you're absolutely. doing here is you're changing the generational pattern of hurt, what you were saying before, that, you know, you, people pass down their, their hurts to their children and you're changing this. Uh, you're changing this, you're breaking the pattern. That's very powerful. And that that is actually one of the things that I've been saying to myself as well, you know, is like the, the buck stops here, yes. you know, the, the buck stops with me. And, and it, it becomes when you do the work and you really work on um, an authoritative parental style, which was mine, you know, the kind of, um what i felt i needed and also adding in some nurturing as well yes. when you do that you, you step outside and, and a strange thing happened with me where that became more natural that the, the voices of my new parents so to speak yeah. became the natural voice and i still have the old ones but they're, they're real quiet yeah. you know and they'll, yeah. they'll They'll come up, but I'm able to step outside. I'm not in it, you know. I'm not in that conversation. Nice. So that, that, that's it's just it's just my relationship with myself. That's that's, and I think that's the scent, especially for INFPs, is um, having a loving relationship via your feelings as well. Yes. You know, and using your feelings as, as a central um, thing to to guide the whole of the process yeah yeah wow i can i can tell like by how you're talking about your process uh with the work and and with yourself um i can tell the the level of kind of the the benefit that you've got from the course because you've you've embodied it how you speak about it is you're not just talking about it like you were saying before you know i used to just stay at home and think about things and that type of thing whereas now i'm out there doing Absolutely. It. and it's exactly what's happened you've taken this course you've taken the learnings in it that were relevant to you and you've actually embodied them and that's just my hat is completely off to you thank you thank you for doing your work we we need this is what exactly what we need and this is exactly what the program was designed to achieve so i'm 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 a little bit speechless <laughs> and for those of you who know me, that's very rare <laughs> <laughs> no i appreciate i pre- appreciate Ooh. that you recognize that and um you know it's it's doable you know it's doable yeah. and it takes it takes it every day you know i think in in one of the sessions um someone said in the q and a do do the or maybe it was you maybe it's one of the exercises make sure you do this for 30 days yeah and um i did the 30 days of you know every morning having a little sit down with my inner child and you know giving guidance nurturance and i have like a few sayings that um i say Mm. to my inner child each morning and and that kind of stuck you know so I did the 30 days and then it, it just become a habit so it's like um a morning yoga <laughs> you know it's, 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 right. it's part of the routine yeah and and it's for for anyone that that is thinking about doing the course it, it's for me that that's the real kind of um thing that changed everything about the way I felt about myself and my self-esteem is just there's an abandoned child in me that hasn't got its needs met and mm. has been screaming out for attention and love and all those kind of things. And when you start to receive that from yourself as a parent, it sounds kind of weird if you haven't done it before, but um, it starts to work and you you start to feel 
like you can trust yourself and you have more energy to go out and trust yourself actually out there in the world. Yeah. Wow. Imagine if, imagine if uh, for our listeners here, imagine if you could go out as an INFP or an INFJ as well. If, if can you, can you imagine yourself going out there into the world and knowing that you have your back, no matter what happens? How would your exactly exploration right. change? How would your, you know, yeah. would you be much more likely to express your true self? You know, open absolutely. Whew. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it, you know, I I can slip back a little bit, but I don't slip all the way back. No, oh, that's the difference. You know, yeah, and with the not... exploration, there's a few slips and slides. You know, it's not sure. perfect, but it's it's consistent and um people are okay you know when you're out and about and you meet people people are okay and i used to think that people weren't okay and they couldn't be trusted and because i have this different relationship going on with myself it actually turns out that people are okay and you can make new friends and do lots of cool things isn't it amazing we're holding ourselves back from so much by not trusting ourselves absolutely absolutely and and self-trust you know is where the action is i I couldn't agree with you more that's exactly that's precisely it yeah wow well what a great place to end this interview i could completely keep going for another five hours (laughs) <laughs> and I'm sure that all of our listeners could could do too. If you've enjoyed this interview, please let us know on social media. Feel free to uh, feel free to share, like, comment, and so on on Facebook, wherever. Just make sure that whoever you think that might really benefit from hearing um, what Rod and myself have just been talking about in the last hour or just under an hour would be would be wonderful if you did share that, Rod. Oh my God, thank you so much for your time. I am, I feel really humbled having had this time with you. It's, it's morning here in Australia right now, so I'm feeling really humbled to have had this time with you this morning. I'm, I'm, thank you so much. Yeah. My pleasure, my pleasure. I know it's been great talking with you. And um, yeah, and I, I hope to, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab um, one of your, pieces that you recorded i think you recorded a cover ver- version of the milkman of human kindness for was this oh sure this was for your inner child this recording i i believe do you mind just uh, yeah uh, yeah very quickly um, that? yeah yeah the, the lyrics in it um uh were kind of recorded I mean, it's a cover version it's not my song but the sure. lyrics are if you want to look at it in the terms of the work that we do um the lyrics are very much the parent talking to the child yeah um and it's just a really nice kind of simple song about reassurance lovely lovely thanks very much uh, rod it's just this has been such a privilege to me thank you for your time me too me too thanks very much Mario. thank you and uh we will look forward to hearing from all of you soon Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. If you were slain.